In this video, we'll be traveling to an airport that sees two flights a day. Once we're there, we'll hike to the state tri-point. This is California. I'm Tom, I'm in Illinois, but I'm headed to Iowa, South Dakota, and Nebraska today. Time for another installment of Tom in the Midwest. Tom in the Midwest is a series I developed while living in Chicago. My job had me traveling all over the region and determined to not just spend my free time watching TV in a hotel room, I made it my mission to explore every town I was sent to. It gave me the opportunity to see places that I'd otherwise probably never see. I ate good local food and almost every community I visited had an interesting piece of railroad history. But this may be my last one for a while, since in the meantime I've quit that job and moved to Washington DC. But today's video is going to be a good one. I'm headed to Sioux City, Iowa. I think that's the fastest I've ever been through security here at O'Hare. I'm about to get on a United Airlines flight to Sioux City, Iowa, and Sioux City has a very interesting geography. So the downtown of the city is located in the state of Iowa, however, Go a little bit to the west and you will be in the state of South Dakota. Go a little bit to the south and you'll be in Nebraska. My flight, United Airlines 5063, took one hour and 40 minutes to reach Sioux City. In the very back. The plane is tiny but very comfortable. To the Sioux City Airport here in Iowa. This airport sucks. <laughs> in all seriousness, I think this is the entire thing. Looks like there's not a lot of flights today. My flight today was really great. So right now I'm gonna go find a bathroom and then we'll go look for the rental car facility. Of course, there was a bit of a line at the rental car desk, but it didn't take long. Before I knew it, I had the key and I was walking out to the lot. Here's my car next to the helicopter landing pad. All right, so now I have my rental car. It's this Chrysler mom van. I'll be ready to take the kids to soccer practice after work. Uh, renting the car was super easy, especially compared to my experience in California, but man, are we in Iowa. You know those home decor signs that say like, in this house we, or live, laugh, love? I saw somebody with one of those tattooed on their arm. Anyways, I've got about three hours before I have to be where I have to be, so let's go exploring a little bit. We're gonna drive to downtown Sioux City, but instead of going the fastest way, we're gonna take a detour through Nebraska. So this is South Sioux City, Nebraska. I'm not planning on staying long here. I just kind of wanted to be able to say that I've been to Nebraska on this trip. This is only my second time in this state. If you're a woman here and you have a small business, you're wondering what to name it. Basically, all you gotta do is have your name and then add whatever it is your business does. Problem solved. All right, Nebraska, it's been real. Time to go back to Iowa and explore the real Sioux City. So I just turned the AC on and it reeks. Crossing the Missouri River means we've ended our little detour through Nebraska and are back in the Hawkeye state of Iowa. All these river borders in the area will become important later on in the video. All right, put an hour in the parking meter. Let's go explore Sioux City. My first impression is that this is kind of a flatter version of Grand Rapids, Michigan, which was my home for four years. And just this entire block that I'm walking through right now, it's all mid-rise bank buildings. 
Sioux City has a population of 85,000, making it the fourth largest city in the state of Iowa. Though the first things I noticed were all the banks, the largest employer in this city by far is the food processing industry. The area was originally inhabited by the Yankton Sioux people. In 1804, the Lewis and Clark expedition traveled through here. In fact, right here in Sioux City, a man named Charles Floyd became the only member of their group to die during the entire expedition. It's the United Center. Oh yeah, the one thing that was missing, a massive hospital complex. Like in many American cities of this size, the medical sector is also a large employer in this area. And if you can make it past the banks and the hospitals and stuff, it's really worth walking all the way over here to the historic 4th Street district. I'll be honest, I came this way because I heard a train horn, um, but along the way I discovered that there are a lot of pretty buildings here. Fun fact, Sioux City opened an elevated railway in 1891, one year before the L in Chicago opened. Though initially a steam railway, it was converted to electricity in 1892, also well before the L. Unfortunately, it didn't last long and closed less than 10 years later. Now the elevated railroad has been gone for over a century, but what is public transportation like here today? Well, there is a bus operator, Sioux City Transit. They run 11 regular bus routes, including one to the airport. There's also the school tripper service, getting kids to and from the local schools. Paratransit is available as well, and intercity bus service is provided by Jefferson Lines. So now I'm in Dakota Dune, South Dakota. Now if I remember correctly, this city was planned and built by Berkshire Hathaway, a company that's owned by Warren Buffett and who also owns the BNSF Railway. There's something uncanny about this place. The entire town is all these very meticulously planned residential neighborhoods. All the houses and streets are styled to look the same. The streets are very wide and the trees are in very neat rows. Something about it feels very planned and I don't know if that's because I know that it's planned or if it's just the way it feels but something feels off. Anyways, time for me to get a little bit of work done. We'll see you after. And I'm back. It's a few hours later and I'm still in Dakota Dunes, South Dakota. Time for a nice early evening walk. It's still really warm out. Right now I am on a piece of land that is right in between the Missouri River, the longest river in the United States, and the Big Sioux River. And the Big Sioux River is the border between here and Iowa. The Missouri River is the border between South Dakota and Nebraska. And ultimately, they merge at the state tri-point. So we're going to try to get as close to that as possible. All right, made it to the end of the trail. This was a lovely walk. The heat is just perfect, and all you hear is the chirping of the birds around you. Well, except for over here, you can hear the interstate. But that highway is on the other side of the Big Sioux River, so it is in Iowa, and the tri-point is just a few hundred feet that way off the path. Well, that was really cool. I made it all the way onto that thin strip of land that forms the tri-point. Now I didn't go all the way to the tip because there was a bird who had a nest there. I didn't want to disturb it. This is their home, not mine, but still.
Another interesting thing about Sioux City is that there's a Hard Rock Hotel. Now, you might think, Hard Rock, aren't they only in like major cities? That's what I thought. So maybe there's a cool story behind why there's one here. Not really. The state of Iowa had a casino license to give out and Hard Rock ended up winning that license. So this is mostly just a casino. I can find a better place to eat. After a little research, I settled on Chinese food from Dachau. Let me tell you, it hit the spot. It is a beautiful new day in the tri-state area. Time to bring my big booty Chrysler back to the airport and head on home to Chicago. Thanks, car. Despite the video title, I haven't talked about this airport much yet. Sioux Gateway Airport, abbreviated SUCKS, is located about seven miles south of downtown. In 1989, it was the site of the fatal crash of United Airlines Flight 232. Though 111 people perished, Thanks to the quick actions from first responders, more than 180 lives were saved that day. It's funny when an airport only serves two flights a day, you can get here two hours before your flight and nothing's open. The cafe isn't, the rental car counters aren't, and not even TSA is. My last purchase here was this awesome shirt. Fly sucks. Trains are awesome. Though the town used to be embarrassed by the code, today they've embraced sucks. The waiting room at the airport was small enough that everybody waiting for the flight could join one big conversation. Unfortunately, the folks around me all seemed in the mood to have one of the most racist conversations I've witnessed in my life. Nothing was off limits here, apparently. I was relieved to be on the plane again, munching on the chocolate quinoa bar as the Chicago skyline came into view. series. What a nice welcome home present. I did enjoy my time in Sioux City. My favorite part of the trip was definitely the hike in South Dakota on the way to the state tri-point. You know me, I'll never stop exploring, whether it be a small town or a major metropolis. Is there a place you've been that I should add to my list? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.